Okay, so 3.2 is just a step up um, from 3.1. So we're still solving linear equations. It's just that there's going to be more steps in solving um, these linear equations. Uh, we're still going to be applying the properties of equality, so the addition property of equality and the multiplication property of equality in order to isolate uh, the variable that we are trying to solve for. Okay, so our steps are going to look very similar um, as they did for in section 3.1 uh, for solving equations that can be written in the form ax plus b equals to c. Remember, a, b, and c are just um, constants. So our first step is going to look at both sides of the equation that we're given and make sure that both sides are simplified as much as possible, meaning we've combined um, all like terms. Then we're going to be applying the addition property of equality. Um, remember, the addition property of equality says that we can either add or subtract um, the same value from both sides of the equation. Um, and then once we have applied the addition property of equality to get all the constants on the same side, uh, then we will be using the multiplication, or you can also think of it as the division property of equality, um, in order to finish isolating the variable. Um, and then don't forget, you can always check your answers by substituting into the original equation, although I'm not going to require that you show that on any sort of assessment. Okay, so our first example here, uh, thinking to our first step. So we're looking at the left and the right hand side of the equation uh, to see if we can combine any like terms. And I see that on the left hand side of the equation, uh, we have a negative 3x and uh, minus 2x here. So minus 3x minus 2x will end up being negative 5x. Okay, so all I've done is combined like terms on the left side of the equation. Uh, the right hand side, we just have the constant 4. So I want to think about moving everything away from the x, because we're trying to isolate the x on one side of the equation. Um, so I am going to, I want to get the negative 5x by itself on the left hand side of the equation. So I'm going to actually subtract 9 from each side. Okay, and remember I would like you to show that you are demonstrating the properties of equality. So I'm actually showing that I'm subtracting 9 from each side and then that will end up simplifying to be negative 5x on the left side and 4 minus 9 will be negative 5 on the right side of the equation. So now I have negative 5x equals to negative 5. So the operation that's happening between negative 5 and x is multiplication. So in order to isolate the x, I'm going to apply the opposite operation. So we're going to divide by negative 5 on each side of the equation. Move all this up a little bit. Okay, so then when we simplify, we'll get x is equal to positive 1. Okay, next equation. So remember, we're first checking for like terms. I see that I can combine 7x minus 4x. So the right-hand side of this equation can be written as 3x minus 5. Okay, so we want to get the 3x by itself on the right-hand side of the equation. So to do that, I'm going to add 5 to each side. I'm showing that. Okay, so then the left-hand side will now be negative 15, and the right-hand side will be 3x. And then to finish isolating x, we can divide by 3. Since that's 3 times x, we're going to divide by 3 on each side to get x is equal to negative 5. And then by the symmetric property of equality, I can flip that around to be x equals to 
negative 5. Okay, I will let you try the U tries. All right, so when we have an equation um, where there are fractions or decimals in it, um, you have a couple options. You can deal with the fractions as is. Like I see that we have two, so one half x and three fourths x. Those are like terms that we could combine by adding one half plus three fourths. And we would need to get a common denominator in order to add the fractions. Um, and then we would want to add five thirds to each side of the equation. And again, we would need to um, work on getting a common denominator. I, that's totally fine, and you are welcome to do that, but I prefer to apply the multiplication property of equality first, and to do what Miss Walters calls dropping a bomb on the left and right side of the equation in order to um, have just integer coefficients and in integers that we're dealing with, okay? So the number that I'm going to multiply on each side of the equation by is going to be the least common multiple of the denominators, or the smallest common denominator. Um, so what's the smallest number that 2, 4, 3, and 6 divide into evenly? And that, it looks like, is going to be 12. So I'm going to multiply by 12 on each side of the equation here. Now, if you didn't recognize 12 and you maybe said 24, well, 2, 4, 3, and 6 all divide evenly into 24. So that would be fine. It's just you're going to end up dealing with um, larger numbers. So now on the left-hand side of the equation, I'm going to distribute the 12 in. So 12 times 1 half x gives me 6x. Then 12 times 3 fourths x. Well, that, remember, I'm going to have a little side work over here just to show you this. So 12 over 1 times 3 fourths. 4 goes into 4 once. 4 goes into 12 3 times. So that's actually just 9. And remember, we have chosen a number that each of these denominators will divide into evenly. So this is going to work out every time. So 12 times 3 fourths x is going to be 9x. And then 12 times negative 5 thirds, well, 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 3, or sorry, 3 goes into 12 four times. So 4 times negative 5 will be negative 20. Okay, and then I go over to the right-hand side of the equation. 6 goes into 6 once, 6 goes into 12 twice. So 2 times 5 will be 10. Okay, and now this is an equation that I would prefer to solve. So I see that we still have uh, 6x and 9x are like terms, so we combine like terms to get 15x minus 20 equals to 10. And then we can add 20 to each side of the equation. And then to finish isolating x on the left-hand side of the equation, I'm going to divide by 15. So we get x is equal to 2. Okay, so same as fractions. Um, you're welcome to just deal with the decimals. Um, like I, I see that I have like terms here, so I would be doing um, negative 0.5x minus 0.3x to combine like terms. Totally fine, you can leave as is. Or we can again apply the multiplication property of equality 
and multiply by a number on each side of the equation in order to just be dealing with integers. So notice that I have 4.7 uh, minus 0.5x minus 0.3x and minus 0.1. So if I were to actually multiply each side of the equation here by 10, okay, that's going to allow me to move the decimal to the right one for each of these terms. Not quite yet though, huh? Shouldn't show that yet. Okay, so 10 times 4.7 will turn into 47. Okay, then we'll have minus 5x minus 3x equals to negative 1. Okay, now I can combine like terms. So we'll have 47 minus 8x on the left side. And I want to get negative 8x by itself on the left side of the equation. So I'm going to subtract 47 from each side. I like to leave um, the variable where it is. So whether it's on the left side or the right hand side and just think about applying properties of equality to move everything away from the variable. So that will leave me with negative 8x equals to negative 48. And then I can divide by negative 8 to get x equals to positive 6. So because these ones can be a little bit more challenging, um, I know you guys or some people have a little more anxiety about um, fr dealing with fractions or decimals. I'm going to work through the u tries here. Uh, so again, in order to have an equation that just has integer coefficients and, and constants, I'm going to choose a number to multiply each side of the equation by. So I look at the denominators, 6, 8, 12, and 3, and I think, okay, well, what is the smallest number that all four of those um, values divide into evenly? Uh, and I believe that's going to be 24. Okay, so remember, I've chosen a number that each of the denominators will divide into. So 6 goes into 24 four times, and 4 times 5 will give me 20y, okay? 8 divides into 24 three times. 3 times negative 7y will be minus 21y, okay? 12 divides into 24 two times. 2 times negative 1 will be minus 2. And then 24 times 1 third is the same as 24 divided by 3, which is 8. So now just combining like terms on the left side, negative y minus 2 equals to 8. I'm, well, I'm going to actually move everything up a little bit. So we have space. Okay, so now I'm going to add 2 to each side of the equation. So negative y equals to 10, almost done. Don't forget when we have this negative y, I can think of it as negative 1 times y. So where negative 1 is the coefficient to y. So I'm going to divide by negative 1 on each side here. And I've run out of room. I'm going to come over here. y equals to negative 10. Okay. And for the decimals, so I look at each side of the equation, I see if I were to multiply by 10 on each side, okay, that will give me 64 plus 12x plus 3x equals to 4. So combining like terms, 64 plus 15x equals to 4. I'm going to subtract by 64 on each side of the equation. Okay, 
So we'll get 15x equals to negative 60. And then because this is 15 times x, I'm going to divide by 15. And again, I've run out of room, so I'm going to come over here. So x equals to negative 4. Okay, so like I said, you have the option of um, either working with the decimals or fractions as they are, or you can multiply both sides in a way that um, the constants and coefficients turn into integers. That's my, my preference. Okay, so let's look at a little word problem here, a geometry word problem. Uh, the perimeter P of a rectangle is the sum of twice the length and L and twice the width W. And if we think about what a rectangle looks like, right? We usually refer to the shorter sides as the width, okay, and then the longer sides as the length. So the perimeter um, is the distance around the edge of the rectangle. So if we wanted to find the perimeter, perimeter would be um, L plus W plus L plus W, right? I just thought about working my way around, okay, to add up the sides. I don't need the last one. So then thinking about combining like terms, that would be 2L plus 2W, which is what's described here in words. Okay, so a rectangular shaped parking lot is to have a perimeter of 450 yards. So that means that the sum of the side lengths are going to be 450 yards. So 450 is going to be P, the value of P. So if the width must be 90 yards, okay, so W in this case is 90 yards. Both those sides are 90. Uh, because of a building code, what will the length need to be? So we want to figure out what L is going to be. So I can replace in my equation for perimeter, I can replace P with uh, 450. We're solving for L. So remember, I've asked you guys to define your variables. It's kind of already defined here, but I'm gonna let L equal to the length in yards. Okay, so plus two L plus two times 90, right? Because the width is 90 yards. Uh, simplifying the right-hand side a little bit here, we'll have 2L plus 180. And we're trying to isolate L, so I'm going to subtract 180 from each side. Okay, uh, so 450 minus 180. Is that 270? Yeah, 270. And then if we divide by 2 on each side of the equation, we end up with L is equal to 135. Switch that around. Okay, this is a word poem, so you should summarize your um, answer with a complete sentence. So the length of the parking lot must be 135 yards. Okay, so 3.3 is just going to uh, kind of give us some equations that maybe have some more steps. You can think of it as being a little bit more complicated.